So now that you have learned about what a mole is, we're going to take a look at some relationships that we can use with a mole. And the first one is when we look at the periodic table, the average atomic mass that's on the periodic table for a particular element tells us how many grams that one mole of that element would weigh. We can use that number then to help us convert between grams and moles for a particular element or compound. So for example, if I look at carbon on the periodic table, its average atomic mass is 12.011, and that means that that's how many grams there would be if we had one mole. If we looked at any element on the periodic table and looked at its average atomic mass, that would tell us how many grams were in one mole of that substance. So if we had two moles of carbon and each one was 12.011, then we could simply take 2 times that mass off the periodic table, and that would tell us that we had about 24 grams. And we can apply that same concept if we talk about a whole entire compound. So a formula mass tells me the mass of a formula, and a molecular mass, or sometimes called a molar mass, tells me the mass of a molecule. Now the only difference between these two is that molecular mass is for a molecule, which means it's for covalently bonded things. Formula mass is generally for ionic bonded things, but they, they work the same way. <clears throat> and to figure out each one of them, you would just add the individual atomic masses together. So for a compound, you're going to add the total mass of all of the atoms, and then we could use that as a conversion factor. So if we had barium nitrate, for example, we have one barium, and off the periodic table, this is the mass of one barium. We have two oxygen, or two nitrogens, because two times the N here would be two nitrogens, and this is the mass from the periodic table. I have a total of six oxygens, because three times two would be six, and six times that mass of oxygen on the periodic table and adding those all up gets me a total of 261.27 grams in each mole of barium nitrate. So if I had 395 grams of barium nitrate, I could figure out how many moles that was because I know each mole is 261.27 grams. So if I start with my 395 and then there's 261.27 grams in one mole, I would take 395 and divide by the 261, and I get about 1.51 moles of barium nitrate. Now the mole hole is something that I have devised to kind of help my students. On the chart that I'm going to make, down means you're going to divide, up means you're going to multiply. So if we had... If we had grams, I'm going to put that up here, and typically moles, when we think of the animal, moles live in the ground. So I'm going to draw a hole here, and in my hole is my mole. And on this side, I'm going to put particles. So particles could be molecules or atoms. Now last week, we learned that if we wanted to go between moles and particles, we have to use Avogadro's number, which is that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I had moles and I wanted to find particles, I would be going up on my chart and I would multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If I had atoms and I wanted to find out how many moles, I would go down the chart and I would be dividing by Avogadro's number. Now on the other side, to go between grams and moles, I'm going to be using that molar mass or that formula mass that we've been talking about. So if I wanted to go from grams to moles, I would have to go down the chart and I would be dividing by my molar mass. Or if I had moles and I wanted to go up to grams, I would have to multiply by the molar mass. So whenever you go down, you're going to divide. Whenever you go up, you're going to multiply. And right now, we're focusing on going between grams and moles, so we've been using that molar mass, which is the things added up. Okay, now when we talk about stoichiometry, stoichiometry 
is a way that we can go between reactants and products in a balanced chemical equations and we can figure out what those relationships are. And in a balanced chemical equation, the coefficients that we put in front of there to balance the equation represent moles. So if I had this particular equation, I could say that two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen and that yields two moles of water just by looking at these coefficients out in front. So two of the hydrogen react with one of the oxygen and I get two of the water. And I could then use those coefficients to help me convert. So if I started with 0.75 moles of hydrogen, I know according to my equation that one mole of oxygen, because one was the coefficient in front of the oxygen, is to two moles of hydrogen, because two was the coefficient in front of the hydrogen. And I put the hydrogen on the bottom because then this and this one would cancel. And all I have left is moles, so I would take 0.75 times one, and then divide by two, and that would tell me I have 0.38 moles of oxygen. So basically I have about half as much oxygen as I do hydrogen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that molar mass piece and this mole piece and we're going to put it all together. So when we do a stoichiometric calculation, the first step that has to be done is we have to write and balance the equation. So that's where you're going to use your coefficients in front to help balance the equation. Once you've balanced the equation, you can then use your molar masses to convert the grams that you were given into moles. Third step would be we would use the coefficients in the balanced equation to convert between moles of one thing to moles of another one. And then lastly, we would convert the moles of what we were trying to find back into grams. Now, if we want to kind of simplify that, that means if we start with grams of one thing, we'll call it A. First step is go to moles of that substance. Then between moles of A and moles of B, we would be using the coefficients in the balanced equation to help us go back and forth. And then I would kind of finally convert between moles of B back into grams of B using my molar mass. So the first step here, this would be using molar mass. This would be using the coefficients, and this would be molar mass again. So the most that you would have would be about three steps. Molar mass, here's your ratio between your coefficients, and molar mass again. And you can jump in and out of this chart whenever you need to. For example, if they would give you moles of one thing and just want you to convert to moles of another, then all you have to do is one step where you use the coefficients. If they gave you grams of one thing and just wanted you to find moles of that, then all you have to use is your molar mass. And I could actually write on here, this would be divide by your molar mass would be the first step. This would be the coefficients in your balanced equation. And then your last step, this would be multiplying by your molar mass. So I'm going to work an example problem here. Let's pretend that we were given 29 grams of zinc and we wanted to figure out how much zinc nitrate or zinc chloride, excuse me, could be produced. So here's the unbalanced reaction below and I can tell it's unbalanced because I have two hydrogens and two chlorines, but only here I only have one. So my first step is going to be to balance that equation. So I put a two here in front because that gives me two hydrogens to match with these two and that gives me two chlorines, and that would balance with these two. And there's one zinc on each side, so the equation is balanced. The next step is I would convert this 29 grams of zinc into moles. So to do that, I'm gonna need my molar mass. So I take 29 grams of zinc, I'm gonna be dividing by that molar mass from the periodic table, 65.39. So 29 divided by 65.39, and I get 0 0.9 moles of zinc, so almost one mole of zinc. My third step would be to convert that moles of zinc into moles of zinc chloride. So 
I had 0.9 moles of zinc from step number two. In my balanced equation, there was a coefficient of one in front of my zinc chloride, and there was a coefficient of one in front of my zinc. So I just made a ratio, one of zinc chloride to every one of zinc. So 0.9 times one divided by one would get me 0.9 of the zinc chloride. My last step then would be to convert that zinc chloride that I just found and convert it into grams. So to do that, I'm gonna have to multiply by my molar mass. So 0.9 moles of zinc chloride times, this is one zinc and two chlorines from the periodic table added up. So 0.9 times this 136.3, and I get 120 grams of zinc chloride, which means if I started out with 29 grams of zinc, this is the amount of zinc chloride that I'm gonna produce.